Welcome to the Bible Quiz. Today, we're about to embark on an exciting biblical journey. We've meticulously selected 25 thought-provoking, who said that questions to challenge your knowledge of the Holy Bible. Are you ready to prove just how well you know the scriptures? But hold on, before we delve into the quiz, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Your support helps us extend the reach of God's word. And after the quiz, don't forget to drop a comment below, sharing how many questions you got right. We're eager to hear from you and be part of your Bible exploration. So are you ready to dive into this enlightening adventure? Let's get started. Question one, are you the coming one or do we look for another? Who said that? A, Peter. B, John the Baptist. C, Thaddeus. D, disciples of John the Baptist. You get 10 seconds. That's D, disciples of John the Baptist. Disciples of John the Baptist said it in Matthew chapter 11, verse 3. John the Baptist, while in prison, expressed uncertainty about Jesus' identity. This question led to Jesus confirming his role as the awaited Messiah, Matthew chapter 11, verses 3 to 6. Question 2. Am I my brother's keeper? Who said that? A. Abel B. Cain C. Esau D. Judah You get 10 seconds. That's B. Cain Cain said it in Genesis chapter 4, verse 9. Cain said this deflecting responsibility for Abel's well-being. This question reflects a refusal to acknowledge one's responsibility for the welfare of others, highlighting the consequences of jealousy and sin. Question 3. John, whom I beheaded, has been raised from the dead. Who said that? A. Herod B. Herodias C. Delilah D. Nebuchadnezzar You get 10 seconds. That's A. Herod. Herod said it in Mark chapter 6 verses 16 to 17. Herod Antipas said this expressing his superstition and guilt. Herod's fear and conscience are evident as he hears about the miracles performed by Jesus, linking them to the resurrected John the Baptist. Question 4. What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? Who said that? A. Elijah B. Balaam C. Elisha D. Balaam's donkey. You get 10 seconds. That's D. Balaam's donkey. Balaam's donkey said it in Numbers chapter 22, verse 28. The donkey spoke to Balaam questioning his unjust treatment. This miraculous event reveals God's intervention to convey a message and prevent Balaam from proceeding on a harmful path. Question 5. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Who said that? A. Job B. Jonathan C. David D. Moses you get 10 seconds.
That's C, David. David said it in Psalm chapter 23, verse 1. In this well-known psalm, David poetically expresses his trust in God as a caring shepherd who provides and protects, affirming that in God, he lacks nothing. Cherished friend, don't miss out on any of our future quizzes. Hit subscribe and stay tuned for more great quizzes. Question 6. Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Who said that? A. Andrew B. Bartholomew C. Thomas D. Judas, son of James You get 10 seconds. That's C. Thomas. Thomas said it in John chapter 14, verse 5. Thomas, one of the disciples, expressed uncertainty about the destination Jesus mentioned. This question led to Jesus' profound declaration, I am the way and the truth and the life, John chapter 14, verse 6. Question 7. Speak, for your servant is listening. Who said that? A. Abraham. B. Samuel C. Moses D. Eli You get 10 seconds. That's B. Samuel Samuel said it in 1 Samuel chapter 3, verse 10. Young Samuel, while serving in the temple, responded obediently to God's call. This pivotal moment marked the beginning of Samuel's prophetic ministry and highlights the importance of attentiveness to God's voice. Question 8. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Who said that? A. Impure spirit. B. Citizen of Capernaum C. Pharisees D. Sadducees You get 10 seconds. That's A. Impure spirit. Impure spirit said it in Mark chapter 1, verses 23 to 24. A man possessed by an impure spirit said this upon encountering Jesus. This acknowledgement reveals recognition of Jesus' divine authority. Question 9. God himself will provide the lamb for the burnt offering, my son. Who said that? A. Elijah B. Moses C. Isaiah D. Abraham. You get 10 seconds. That's D. Abraham. Abraham said it in Genesis chapter 22, verse 8. Abraham spoke these words to his son Isaac during the testing of Abraham's faith. This statement foreshadowed God's ultimate provision, seen in Jesus as the sacrificial lamb, emphasizing divine providence and foreshadowing the redemptive work of Christ. Question 10. How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Who said that? A. Peter B. Philip C. Matthew D. Nicodemus You get 10 seconds. That's D. Nicodemus Nicodemus said it in John chapter 3, verse 4. 
Nicodemus, a Pharisee and ruler, asked this question to Jesus. His inquiry reflected confusion about the concept of spiritual rebirth, initiating a profound conversation about being born again and entering the kingdom of God. John chapter 3, verse 1 to 15. Question 11. Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Who said that? A. David B. Saul C. Job D. Solomon You get 10 seconds. That's C. Job. Job said it in Job chapter 1, verse 21. Job uttered these words in response to immense personal loss. Despite his suffering, Job maintained a posture of acknowledging God's sovereignty and offering praise, highlighting profound trust and faith. Question 12. My daughter, should I not seek rest for you, that it may be well with you? Who said that? A. Esther. B. Naomi C. Ruth D. Sarah You get 10 seconds. That's B. Naomi Naomi said it in Ruth, chapter 3, verse 1. Naomi spoke these words to her daughter-in-law, Ruth, expressing a desire to find a secure and prosperous future for her. This statement reflects Naomi's concern and care for Ruth's well-being. Question 13. My little daughter is dying. Please come and put your hands on her so that she will be healed and live. Who said that? A. Jairus B. Martha C. The Centurion D. Samaritan Woman You get 10 seconds. That's A. Jairus Jairus said it in Mark chapter 5 verse 23. Jairus, a synagogue leader, spoke these desperate words to Jesus, seeking healing for his gravely ill daughter. Question 14. Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for this calamity. Who said that? A. Jesus' disciples. B. Egyptian officials. C. Sailors. D. Roman soldiers. You get 10 seconds. That's C. Sailors. Sailors said it in Jonah chapter 1 verse 7. The sailors said this when a storm arose. Casting lots was a common practice to determine guilt, and in this case, it revealed Jonah as the cause of the calamity, leading to his eventual acknowledgement and sacrifice. Question 15. Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. Who said that? A. The rich young ruler. B. Lydia, the seller of purple cloth. C. Matthew. D. Zacchaeus. You get 10 seconds. That's D. Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus said it in Luke chapter 19, verse 8. 
Zacchaeus, a tax collector, made this declaration after encountering Jesus. His willingness to repent and make amends reflects a profound change of heart. Question 16. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Who said that? A. Habakkuk B. Joshua C. Paul D. Stephen You get 10 seconds. That's B, Joshua. Joshua said it in Joshua, chapter 24, verse 15. Joshua proclaimed this commitment to serve the Lord, urging the Israelites to choose whom they would serve. This resolute statement reflects Joshua's leadership and determination to prioritize the worship and service of God in his household. Question 17. I know what a beautiful woman you are. When the Egyptians see you, they will kill me, but will let you live. Who said that? A. Jacob B. Joseph C. Abraham D. Potiphar You get 10 seconds. That's C, Abraham. Abraham said it in Genesis chapter 12, verses 11 to 12. Abraham said this out of fear for his life, expressing concern about how the Egyptians might respond to Sarai's beauty. Question 18. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Who said that? A, Silas. B. Agabus C. Nicodemus D. Jesus' disciples You get 10 seconds. That's D. Jesus' disciples Jesus' disciples said it in John chapter 9, verses 2 to 3. The disciples asked this question to Jesus, assuming a connection between the man's blindness and sin. Jesus redirected their focus toward God's redemptive purpose. Question 19. Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Up to seven times. Who said that? A. Peter. B. Simeon C. John D. James You get 10 seconds. That's A. Peter. Peter said it in Matthew chapter 18, verse 21. Peter posed this question to Jesus, possibly thinking he was being generous with forgiveness. Jesus responded by emphasizing unlimited forgiveness, illustrating the boundless mercy God extends to his people. Question 20. Teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Who said that? A. Unnamed widow. B. Unnamed Pharisee. C. Unnamed Farmer D. Unnamed Centurion You get 10 seconds. That's B. Unnamed Pharisee Unnamed Pharisee said it in Matthew chapter 22, verse 36. A Pharisee asked this question to test Jesus. In his response, Jesus condensed the entire law into the two greatest commandments. Love God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. 
This encapsulates the essence of God's expectations for human conduct. Question 21. Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. Who said that? A. Jude. B. Elizabeth. C. Pilate's wife. D. Potiphar's wife. You get 10 seconds. That's C, Pilate's wife. Pilate's wife said it in Matthew chapter 27, verse 19. Pilate's wife said this to her husband, urging him to avoid condemning Jesus. Her dream added an element of supernatural warning regarding Jesus' innocence. Question 22. Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Who said that? A. Martha. B. Priscilla. C. Salome. D. Mary. You get 10 seconds. That's A, Martha. Martha said it in John chapter 11, verse 21. Martha expressed her grief and belief in Jesus' ability to prevent her brother Lazarus' death. This statement foreshadowed the miraculous resurrection that Jesus would perform, revealing his power over life and death. Question 23. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Who said that? A. Judas. B. Thomas C. Stephen D. Nathaniel You get 10 seconds. That's D. Nathaniel. Nathaniel said it in John chapter 1 verse 46. Nathanael expressed skepticism about the Messiah's origin. However, Jesus' subsequent interaction with Nathanael convinced him of Jesus' divine nature, challenging preconceptions about Nazareth and affirming that greatness could indeed emerge from unexpected places. Question 24. Go, look over the land, he said, especially Jericho. Who said that? A. David. B. Levi C. Jacob D. Joshua You get 10 seconds. That's D. Joshua. Joshua said it in Joshua chapter 2 verse 1. Joshua, preparing to conquer the Promised Land, sent spies to gather information, with a specific focus on Jericho. This strategic decision laid the groundwork for the Israelites' subsequent conquest of the city. Question 25. May the day of my birth perish in the night that said, A boy is conceived. Who said that? A. Saul B. Jacob C. Job D. Methuselah You get 10 seconds. That's C. Job. Job said it in Job, chapter 3, verse 3. Job, facing immense suffering, cursed the day of his birth. This expression of deep anguish reflects the profound pain and despair Job experienced in the midst of his trials, providing a poignant insight into the emotional toll of his suffering. Oh wow, 
what an incredible journey through the scriptures, challenging your knowledge of the Bible. How did you fare? Whether you aced the quiz or discovered something new, always remember that the Word of God is a boundless source of wonder, just waiting for us to explore. If you enjoyed this quiz, please give the video a thumbs up and share it with your friends and family. Let's invite them to embark on this biblical adventure as well. And don't forget to click that subscribe button for more quizzes and profound biblical insights. We highly value your feedback, so please share your score, any questions or suggestions for future quizzes in the comments. Together, we can continue to deepen our understanding of God's Word. Thank you for joining us today, and may you be blessed on your spiritual journey. Thank you, and see you in the next video.